We are going to be taking a look at my top five sleeper players going into 2019. Now, in my opinion, these guys are very, very slept on. And maybe it's the media that sleeps on it. Maybe it may be anything. But either way, these guys don't get enough attention for what they bring to the team or what they could bring to the team in 2019. So in this video, we're taking a look at my top five sleepers for 2019. Now, I want you guys to interact with this video by getting down in the comments below and giving me your top five list. If you can, if you can think of five, go for it. If you can't think of five, if you can think of two, put them in the comments below because that's cool. And also, if you agree with any parts of my list, make sure you put that in the comments as well. Um, so let's get right into the list. Starting off at number five, we have Jared Davis. Okay, Jared Davis, I feel like for the Detroit Lions is one of the most slept on players. And I didn't want to go with a lot of starters because I feel like starters are usually not very slept on because they're starters, right? Maybe not to the team or something. I think the Lions believe in Jared Davis a lot. I think it's other people that really don't believe in Jared Davis. I don't hear a lot of good things about Davis, even though he just hit 100 tackles last season. Jared Davis is a tackler, okay? He had over five sacks last season as well. He was a guy that could blitz the quarterback very well. His one knock is that he does not great in coverage. And yes, he's not great. He's getting better, though. We've seen improvements from his rookie season to his second year. And I think a lot of people really want to just pinpoint one play, and that was versus the Cowboys. And obviously, it's a tough place for him to be in trying to guard Ezekiel Elliott down the field. He was pretty much right with him. Problem was, he couldn't make that play to knock it away. Elliott's kind of a mismatch for a lot of linebackers in the NFL. Now, Tavai, on the other hand, may have been able to guard that, but that's what Tavai does. Tavai's good at that. Jared Davis has to improve, I will give you that. But at the same time, I think Jared Davis is completely slept on. And he's a really, really good player for the Lions. So he comes in at number five. Okay, so now let's jump into number four. And at number four, I have a wide receiver. And that is Jermaine Curse. And you may be like, Jermaine Curse, he may not even make the team. You are absolutely right. But he is very, very slept on. In 2017, he had 810 receiving yards. Really, his career year came in 2017, and that was only two years ago. Two seasons ago, if you think about that. And now he has 2019 to prove what he can do with the Detroit Lions. And he's also in a very, very comfortable situation back when he was with Seattle. See, he was with Seattle. He was a solid wide receiver. Then he went to Jets and kind of blew up. He had his best year with the Jets. Now, last season wasn't great, but that's fine, okay? But a lot of people are kind of making it seem like, okay, this guy's done. He's worn out. He's not what he used to be. But I believe Jermaine Curse is just getting started. Jermaine Curse has a lot to offer to the Detroit Lions. Being comfortable back with Daryl Bevel, I think he's, they brought him in for a reason. This is a guy that can play the site and he can play the outside. I see him as our number four wide receiver right now, but if injuries happen, he could step up. He's a guy that's won the Super Bowl before, so he has experience. And that's something that we really have ahead. And other people have talked about this, and that's a really good point. We don't have a lot of guys with experience on our team, not guys that have been through it. Like, hey, I've won a Super Bowl. I know what it's like to win a Super Bowl. We don't have a lot of guys like that. But Jermaine Curse is one of those guys. And again, only two seasons ago with his best season. So it's not like he's worn out. Jermaine Curse has a lot to bring to this team. And I could see him having a really, really impactful year in 2019. And he comes in at number four. Now, into the top three, we have a tight end. Now, who are you thinking? You're probably thinking Jesse James. No, I'm not going to go with Jesse James. I don't think Jesse James is too slept on. I think some people might, but I don't think he's very slept on. But I'm going to go instead with Logan Thomas. A lot of people forget about what Logan Thomas, right? Because he was a quarterback. This guy was with the Lions before, and he didn't do anything as tight end. So why would I care about Logan Thomas? He's different this year, man. I'm telling you. We gave him a second chance, and this guy has been good throughout training camp. He's going to bring a lot to this team. And one thing you have to keep an eye out for is that red zone offense. That's something that we struggled with in the past. I can remember one specific game, if you go back a few years to the Steelers, we could not score in the red zone. It was like six trips in the red zone. We didn't score a touchdown one time. It was so hard to watch. It was like, why are we not getting into the end zone? Logan Thomas may be one of those guys to fix it. And obviously, there's Hawkinson, right? Hawkinson can help out. Jesse James definitely going to help out. But that third tight end, Logan Thomas, is one of those guys that I forgot about, especially if you run three tight ends. Don't forget about him on the field because he will be the guy that's not really, you know, thought of by the defense. Defense is going to take Jesse James because he's six foot seven. And they're going to take the eighth pick away in the draft. They're going to try to at least. They're really not going to focus on Logan Thomas. And that could leave him open for some opportunities. Also, he was a quarterback. So, you know, if someone needs to throw the ball, I'd probably rather give it to Logan Thomas in all honesty than David Fells or Tom Savage. I'm just being honest there. That's no hate, but... uh yeah, I think that's what I want to do. I don't know why. I just feel like that. But also at the same time, him having, that, him having that quarterback experience can help him at that tight end position because he's going to see the field differently than a lot of other players do. So he comes in at number three. Now we have two players left. I'm not going to tell you who they are because that ruins the whole point of the list. But these are pretty exciting. One guy you may not agree with. The other one I hope you agree with because it's completely obvious to me. So at number two, we have Rashawn Melvin. You may not agree with this one. You may be like, no, he's not slept on. I think Rashawn Melvin... 
when we look back, we'll think to ourselves, we slept on Rashad Melvin. I feel like that's going to happen when 2019 is up. Okay, I feel like when 2019 is done and we look back, we're going to say, wow, a lot of us really didn't think Rashawn Melvin was going to give us this big of an impact. And he may not. He may not. I believe he will start at the number two cornerback week one. That could change. But with that being said, I think Melvin is going to be able to bring a lot to the Lions as a veteran. And, you know, people, again, want to make the point that he was with Raiders, but it's hard to look good with the Raiders. And I actually give, uh, I think that was Jamal that said that. So I got to give him credit for saying that. But with that being said, He's going to be very slept on. I think he's going to bring a lot to this team. He's going to bring veteran experience. And honestly, at the number two cornerback position, if we just had a reliable guy, how can we say that's not exactly what we wanted, right? That's what we want. We want a guy that we can rely on. I don't care if the guy's going to get seven interceptions from the two cornerback position. That doesn't bother me. That's why I didn't care when Slay only had three picks, because that doesn't bother me. He's still shutting down. So the same thing with Rashawn Melvin. If he does his thing, if he's solid, he's reliable, he's going to give up big plays. But if you make a few plays and just be reliable, be a guy that we can run. We just haven't had a guy like that at the number two spot in so, so long. If that can be Rashawn Melvin, he'll be great. And that's that's all we need from you, Rashawn. So he comes in at number two. Now, coming in at number one, this should be obvious. Maybe it's not obvious because I think a lot of people sleep on him so much that it's not obvious, but it should be. That is Romeo Quar. Oh, my goodness. I cannot tell you the disrespect when you don't give credit to Romeo Aquara. I feel that. Romeo Aquara is one of the best players on this defense, and he is completely slept on. Why is he slept on? Well, I believe it is because when he was back with the Giants, this dude didn't make the team. And then Matt Patricia said, come here. Come here, Romeo. I I'll help you out. And then he went out for seven and a half sacks. Seven and a half sacks. He had more solo tackles than Everson Griffin. In 2018 now granted he played a few more games he had more sacks more solo tackles and a forced fumble those are better stats than everson griffin now he did play a few more games but with that being said this is so guy that's so slept on right you don't think about romeo aquara when you think about the great defensive line i think a lot of people don't they think trey flowers mike daniels snacks harrison you think of deshaun hand those type of guys you really don't think about romeo aquara that was doing his thing last year and we can't sleep on this man he is really really good very young I think he could he could be our sack leader in 2019. No, I'm not even kidding. Like, I'm 100% serious. Some other guys are going to take some pressure off of him because, you know, you're going to focus on Trey Flowers. $90 million, you're going to focus on that man. You're going to focus on Mike Daniels' snacks, right? You're going to try to, even though you won't be able to because they're going to just blow up the middle. With that being said, Romeo Cora could have heyday in 2019 with some one-on-one matchups. He comes in at number one. Let me hear your thoughts, comments below. Thank you, Pratt, for watching, and I'm out.